Yo, what's up gamers? It's Abby Elise here and welcome back to another video on the channel. It's another tutorial. Today, I'm going to be teaching you some Sapphire plugin stuff. If you guys watched my subtitle tutorial, I said somewhere there that I would teach some ways of making subtitle animations using Sapphire plugins and here it is now. I will also be teaching some video effects that you could put on videos from Sapphire and also extra things like making a smooth slide animation between footage. So without further ado, let's start. As you can see in the timeline, we have three different parts. Let's start over here at the marker called subtitle animation. If you haven't watched the basics of subtitle making, I recommend watching my subtitle tutorial because I won't be recapping that in this one. So the subtitles here just say, this is a tutorial on Sapphire plugins. Hope you enjoy and learn something from it. But as you can see, there's no like a pop-up animation and it just looks really bland and you could definitely do something to make it stand out more so that's what we're going to be doing i'm gonna link some tutorials on how you can get sapphire plugins on vegas because i'm not going to be teaching that now i already have sapphire plugins installed as you can see anything that has s underscore on it is a sapphire plugin so out of all of these sapphire plugins under the video effects tab you want to be finding s underscore blur mo curves you can search for your plugins here if you're having trouble finding s underscore blur mo curves and what you want to do is drag the default onto your text and you will see this whole menu full of a lot of options so what we're going to focus on for this subtitle animation is the center and z this which basically makes this grow and shrink but as you can see, but as you can see, if you use this slider of Z dist, the anchor point is at like the center of the screen. So when you zoom in and zoom out, it's going to base its center of the zoom from the middle of the screen. And sometimes you don't really want that. You want the center of the zooming to be on the text itself. So the way to fix that is to edit the center. What you want to do is just point this to somewhere in the middle of the text make sure this is 0.50 because 0.50 is like the center of the x-axis you just want to be changing the y-axis which is this other number here so basically you just have to play around with this until you get to a nice little center of the text which is what i got around there so as you can see if you do this now it's centered look at that nice Oh yeah, you also want to change this shutter duration to around 0.8 or 0.5. I'm not really sure which one works better, but I kind of like 0.8. What shutter duration basically is, is like the kind of motion blur that you get. This is one of the reasons why you might prefer using Sapphire plugins for your animations and stuff because it has built in like motion blur that you don't have to add in post or anything. It's just here, which is shutter duration. This basically adds motion blur and you'll see that in a second. But yeah, enough about shutter duration. What we want to do is first click the animate clock thing here on ZDist. And our first keyframe could be around 1.1. You could also make it a bit higher. Let's say 1.2 or 1.3 it's honestly just up to you on what kind of text pop you're looking for but yeah what i'm gonna do is use 0 0.3 and then i'm gonna go one two three four five six seven frames forward i'm gonna type one again which is the regular position but then i am going to make a little bounce so you have to overshoot it a little bit so i'm just gonna put like a nine and then I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five frames forward. Use the arrow keys. But anyways, yeah, we're five frames forward. I'm going to put uh, one to reset it, but then I will overshoot it by a little bit. So like, let's put like a 0.05 there. And then finally go one, two, three, four, five set another keyframe set that to one and then we're done with this we have to set these keyframes you can right click on the keyframe to change its uh fade so i usually set the first keyframe to fast fade all of these three keyframes into smooth you can select multiple keyframes by holding control and clicking on the keyframes but anyways let's check how this looks 
As you can see, it's a really nice little bounce that you have there. And if you want to see how it would look like in a sequence of text, you can right click, hit copy, select the next one, hold shift, select the last text of subtitle, and then right click, paste event attributes, and then this should be good. All right, that is the preview and it looks really, really nice. Of course, you can always experiment around with this animation. Feel free to change some things. Like example, if you don't really like it bouncing that much, you can end the animation around there and just pull the last keyframe back. Like example, if you just wanted to like do one little overshoot keyframe thing and then it's over, you can always do that. And if you want to just mess around with what you feel like would look nice, you can always just try and see what you would prefer. This is without like that second bounce and it looks pretty nice. But yeah, I hope you learned something from me explaining all of these. If you want to know what the other things do, rotate, like, rotates, obviously. You could do some cool animations with this, but I feel like that's for another day. Shift X basically just, you know, shifts X, the X axis. Y does up and down. So yeah, you could definitely make like a pop up from the bottom of the screen if you'd like. You just have to figure out how to animate that nicely. But yeah, moving on from that, let's check out the effects that you could add to clips. So as you can see here, I have like a really random clip of some Bedwars gameplay, which is actually not my own footage. It's from Just Dash, by the way. But uh, you could see that there are a lot of different effects from Sapphire. And here's some really cool ones that I sometimes use. For example, film damage is a pretty good one. Let's drag it onto the clip and whoa, okay, what the heck happened? If this happens to you, if you're using, let's say, Vegas Pro 17, this might happen to you if you have Sapphire. The colors invert when you put a Sapphire plugin on something. I have a fix for that. Let me show you how I fix it. So what I do is search for S underscore glow and I drag it over here onto the clip and just put the brightness to like 0 0.001 or something like the lowest it could go so you can't even see any difference from the original footage and that basically fixes it because for some weird reason for me personally you have to have an even number amount of uh, sapphire plugins for the color to be normal of course that doesn't happen to everybody it might just be me or vegas 17 i'm not really sure but as i was saying film damage as you can see if i play this there's like a little cool effect of like a film damage kind of thing. I didn't really play with these settings that much. So I don't really know what settings look the best. But I mean, you could always play with it. You can like add more of a vignette, which like changes like the darkness of everything and like how much like it flickers or something. You can also make the shakes more uh strong but then i don't really know why you would do that you can add more scratches onto your clip but then you might want to just keep that low <laughs> anyways that's all for film damage let's check out another one here's another cool thing that you might want to use maybe for like montages it's s underscore flicker which basically just you know gives a flickering effect which you could play around with amplitude is like the strength of the flicker the higher that goes like the lighter the flicker is another cool one is s underscore shake let's drag this in basically s underscore shake is actually used a lot like s shake is very useful like example, if you want to shake your screen, maybe because like you're angry or something, you could put the frequency high and then amplitude around there. And then like, boom, look at that. It's like a very angry screen. There's a lot of applications for this. You could also even put shake on your text to make it like more not stationary i would definitely make the settings really low though like around here so that it doesn't look too distracting something like that so it just gives a little bit of movement like if you want really slight movement on something so that the screen is not super still you know you could always add that very subtle effect 
Also, there's motion blur here, which is really cool to make things not look super duper rigid and more smooth. Like example, you have motion blur on, we put like the angry shaky screen back and as you can see from the preview already, you could see that it's like in motion and it's way smoother. Like, look at that. And if you turn up the amplitude a lot, you could see a lot of motion blur, as you can see there. So yeah, it's very recommended to use motion blur, especially if you want this kind of effect. Also, if you want to, like, animate the S-shake, you could. Example, you could put the first keyframe as zero. And then, as you can see, there's no movement. But then, if you want to gradually raise it to a higher amplitude, then that's the kind of effect that you're gonna get. All right, moving on to transitions. Here we have two other clips taken from Just Dash. And what we're going to do is utilize S underscore Blurmo curves again. The same thing that we used for the subtitles. And we're gonna drag that here. It's going to uh, mess up for me. I don't think it's gonna mess up for y'all though. And I'm going to fix it real quick. There you go. So what you want to do with these settings is again put shutter duration to around 0.8 make wrap x and wrap y into reflect and what that does is basically if you move these and it goes out of frame the edges will become like a reflection of the main footage which is what you want for the transition that i'm gonna show so what I'm gonna do is like a little slide to the right kind of transition. So, so since we're working with the X axis, I'm going to click the animate button on shift X. And then I'm going to go to around the last few frames of this clip. So I'm just gonna start like around here. Honestly, you could just eyeball it. As long as it's like more than maybe five or seven frames, it should be good. Like you shouldn't have a very slow animation. You should have a very fast one, just somewhere in the middle. And you can always adjust this later. I'm gonna add a keyframe. Don't change anything yet. Go to the almost very end of the clip. Not really here because that's already the next clip that's on the preview. So it's very hard to judge if you're doing things correctly. But yeah, you want to slide shift x until you're at negative 0.5 and then you would want to drag the negative 0.5 keyframe to the end of this keyframe timeline here the end of the clip set the first keyframe to slow and this is basically what it does yeah it just like does that really quickly and then you just want to Drag Blurmo curves onto the second clip again, which I'm gonna quickly do. There you go, I set the settings again. If you don't wanna keep changing into the correct settings all the time, you can save the preset into anything of Blurmo curves and just save it so that your settings are saved so you don't have to just drag the default one onto the clip over and over again. And it saves a lot of time. But anyways, as I was saying, the second clip you want the first keyframe to be at 0.5 and then you want to animate and go around 10 to 15 frames forward and you want to set that back to zero and then go to the first keyframe, hit fast fade and if you look at this, you will have a slide transition. Ta-da! Look, that looks pretty nice. And of course, you could put like a little sound effect, like a whoosh sound effect to give a more like impactful transition, but this looks really nice. And of course, you could also do the same kind of slide with like the Y axis, which is basically the same process. You could also make a like a zoom in kind of transition but that's basically all i wanted to show so yeah guys that's basically all i use sapphire plugins for these are all of my applications of sapphire plugins into my editing process you can always explore sapphire plugins more and what its capabilities are because I'm sure there's a lot to uncover. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed watching. Leave a like if this helped you step up your editing game. I love you guys so much and I'll see you in the next video whenever that comes out. Bye!